In this video, I'm going to be reviewing Colorverse SM1 Fountain Pen Ink. I'll go over the specs, I will do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this ink coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. So this is my second ink review. We'll see how we do. Uh, this ink that I'm reviewing is SM1 from Colorverse. Now, Colorverse is a brand from South Korea. They make also the Nebula series of notebook. I reviewed one of their hardcover notebooks, really nice notebook for an affordable price. I'll put a link to that review up in the corner, but they also do inks and I think inks are probably what they're more known for. This SM1 is part of their season seven. I guess they do seasonal releases. Uh, season seven is called Eye on the Universe, so it is space related inks. These are sold in a set, so you can't actually buy this individual 60 mil 65 milliliter bottle. It comes packaged with CoStar, which is this really nice, like warm gray ink. I'm not usually a big fan of gray inks, but this one is really nice. You know, they kind of have strange names. SM1, I believe stands for Servicing Mission 1, for servicing the, the Hubble Space Telescope. And then CoStar is an abbreviation, which means Corrective Optics Space Telescope Axial Replacement. So yeah. Uh, space related things they have you know nice little labels on here and i like their tear glass shape bottle they do one that's even five milliliters i have a bunch of these five little milliliter minis in different colors from colorverse so you can get like a really nice little sample and it's just in an even smaller bottle than this so I, I really like that they're packaged really nicely they come with these stickers so you can kind of see all of the the season seven inks here. There's one called Hubble, Extreme Deep Field, which is a nice one, actually pretty similar to SM1 in color, HST, Pillars of Creation, that one I really like that ink. Some of these other ones I haven't used yet, but I do have the full season seven that I, I'm gonna be testing out. Now, you get a, a Colorverse branded napkin in here, you get a pen stand, and this little thing with the star on here is a bookmark. It's kind of a, a fun little package. Now, in terms of the, the price, it's $38 for this set, which is not cheap, but one of the things I love about Colorverse is they are really, I would say, I guess, nerdy or spec heavy on their inks where a lot of other brands aren't. So let me tell you what they, they give you. They give you the RGB color, Pantone color, web color. They give you a surface tension rating, which I have never seen on another ink. Let me know if there are other inks that are providing surface tension ratings. And they give you a pH rating. They really do a nice job. And even though $38 is expensive and you have to buy them kind of, you know, packaged together. So if you don't want a gray ink and you just want SM1, well, you're kind of out of luck. I don't love that aspect of them, but they give you enough that I feel like, okay, I can... I can swallow the, the $38 price. Now, for Blake's broadcast viewers and subscribers, you can get 10% off with code BB10 at checkout. Now, in terms of pH, SM1 is 8.1 pH, so I believe that's on the, the basic side, but not very far off of a neutral pH of, of 7, so we think this is a pretty safe ink. Now, in terms of surface tension, this out of the Season 7 series has the highest surface tension rating of 59.3 dyne per centimeter and that's at a 20 degree celsius i don't know what to do with that i will say that it does feel like a more viscous ink although i would say compared to Hiroshi Zuku, which if you can't tell by now is an ink that i just they're inks i use a lot they feel heavier in my opinion than Hiroshi Zuku inks which have you know, tend to have more of a lubricating quality to them. All right, let's get into looking at the the ink here, and then we can do some live samples here. So up here I did an Aurora style extra fine. It looks pretty nice. You get some shading there. Lamy Ion Medium and Lamy Vista 1.9, and this is Cosmo Air Light 83 GSM. Now there is a blue sheen to it, although 
I would say you really need to kind of get a lot of ink down onto the page to see it. And this is a, uh, what do you call this, a G, I think it's called a G nib. It's either Tachigawa or, or Zebra. It's a flexible nib. And here you really can see that sheen, but that's just a ton of ink. I don't think that's realistic for a normal fountain pen and it almost looks red because it has a shiny red sheen now up at the top where you can where i did the swab you can see more of that that ink i would say the sheen is there but it's not like a super super sheener even though i would put it in the sheening ink category in terms of the way that it writes i would say it has an average flow it's not a problematic ink it doesn't feel dry it definitely feels like maybe a, a thicker ink so I think if you leave it in the pen for a longer time, you know, it might take a few strokes to get it, it started. In terms of how it looks on other papers, this here is Mitsubishi bank paper. And I don't really see too much of a, a color change between the Mitsubishi bank paper and like this Rhodia 80 GSM. The Rhodia, you know, it always ends up looking a little bit more flat I would say but they're pretty close between the bank paper and the Rhodia 80 GSM now in terms of dry time and I'm kind of playing with the way that I'm <laughs> going to be doing this so just kind of bear with me I've done you know the Cosmo Air Light Rhodia and bank paper in terms of dry times it seems like at 20 seconds we're almost completely dry at 30 we are totally dry so we'll say 25 seconds pretty similar performance actually in terms of dry time between these three papers now if you're using a really wide nib i would think that the cosmo air light is going to take a longer amount of time but pretty fast drying ink i would say so happy with with that now let's do some live writing. We can do the Kakimori steel nib here. In terms of like the color, it's, I think it's almost like, I almost want to say it's a dark turquoise. It leans a little bit more blue than, than turquoise, but it kind of feels like there's definitely a, a bit of, of green in there. Um, Actually, we have, what's the RGB color? Yeah, so R is 4, G for green is 102, and B for blue is 1, 2, 3. So it's definitely a greeny blue, a bit more blue in there, as I said. Another pen that maybe would be fun to play with, this is, uh, what do you call this? It's like a, a folded pen. I don't necessarily think this is technically a ruling pen, but it's a, a fun pen. And it does fit into the ink miser, which I'm very happy about. Some of the ruling pens are pretty fat. And I'm somewhat new to this kind of pen, so bear with me. But it's a pretty fun pen to play with. You can get pretty wide as further you go down. Oh boy. But I will say it's... <laughs> Harder to use, and I need to dip this again. Definitely not as easy to use as a uh, Kakimori nib, I would say, but you can go even wider than the Kakimori nib, which is kind of fun. And it does go pretty thin. Come on, ink. I'm gonna let this, next up we can, we can try the, the water test. I'm gonna do it on this written area here we'll just see how it does this has been dry for several days now so we'll just see what that looks like exactly is that good <laughs> so what do we think of sm1 well i like the packaging i like the kind of theming that they do i think it's a very well behaved ink i am pretty picky when it comes to ink i don't like any troublemaker kind of inks if there's ink that's coming up onto my hands or smudging is not drying that drives me nuts and this dries pretty quickly it has like an average flow i would say so it's not a lubricating ink by any means i would pick it for you know average to better than average flow type pens and i think you'll be really happy with it so what are my pros and cons for colorverse sm1 fountain pen ink well, I think the color is 
really nice. It is a darker blue ink with a bit of green in there, so you get kind of a turquoise -y color, although it leans more blue. You also get a nice uh, shiny red sheen when you really put down a lot of ink. Performance is very good. Decent dry times, I got between 20 and 30 second dry times, which is very nice. It's well behaved. I don't find any issues where the ink is coming off onto the page onto my hands, which I really hate. Um, so very kind of mild mannered ink. It has the average flow. It will work great in most pens. I probably wouldn't put it in a drier pen just because for me, my preferences, I like a more lubricating ink in a, a dry pen. But uh, overall, I, I really like it. It comes in a nice package. I. In a, you know, those little extras that they give you, like the, the cleaning towel, the stickers, the bookmark, and the pen holder. They, you know what? They're, they're nice. They make the package more interesting. It's something I don't see other ink companies doing, so I, I do admit I, I like that. Um, in terms of cons, the I think the biggest con is the price. is $38, and you have to buy them in a set. So $38, you get a 60 Five milliliter bottle of SM1 and a 15 milliliter bottle of CoStar. So you have to buy them in a set if you don't want the gray CoStar ink. I don't believe there's a way to buy them without that. So that is, I would say, uh, unfortunate, uh, but it is a really nice ink. I, it's one that I'm happy to have in my collection. Do you guys have this ink? Do you like this ink? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more fountain pen paper ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much. And until next time.